All right, so uh, this is going to be the start of the next RimWorld series on the channel. Specifically, this video is just the overview for this scenario and setting everything up before the first proper episode. I'm going to go through the mod list real quick and describe uh, like the concept, and then I'll get into like the background of the actual scenario we'll be running. Uh, this is primarily, as you probably have noticed by thumbnail at this point, an AVP, Alien vs. Predator based uh, mod pack and run. Um, some important mods here, a lot of the usual suspects. Uh, we've got a bunch of extra trait mods to get a variety of additional traits into the game to make our characters more distinctive. Um, we've got Adrenaline, so this will increase their combat capabilities as battle goes on basically until they crash. AVP obviously should be pretty fun. This is different than the AVP mod I used in my very first RimWorld playthrough on the series. This one is much more involved. Um, we've got some usual stuff, allow tool, alpha animals, alpha biomes. Basically some stuff to add extra aliens and shit to the planet to interact with. Fences, auto cutting blight, just camera, some more support stuff. Um, we've got much more complicated and uh, dangerous diseases this time around. So a big part of what this mod pack is going to be about is not just fighting aliens and predators in your normal RimWorld scenario. We're going to try and make a mod pack and scenario that's uh, much more attrition based. So to that end, we have things like diseases and a few other mods in the mod pack I'll get to, like the very next one down here, bad hygiene, that make survival much more complicated. Not just we die to combat or we don't, or we die to starvation, we're going to have to deal with diseases and hygiene and all these additional complications. Um, the the concept of the mod pack is going to, or the concept of the playthrough rather, using the mod pack is going to be that we're marooned. And so we'll be starting out very strong, but we're going to have some pretty harsh restrictions upon what we can add to our colony, uh, both in terms of the scenario well basically they're going to be primarily self-imposed rules that aren't like strict to the starting scenario and the mod pack but yeah the idea will be these marines we're playing as have been trapped on this planet and they can't replace the equipment they came down with and they have to do everything they can to survive on this very harsh planet uh so hygiene will have uh showers and toilets will be a requirement instead of the usual rim world just to have a bed and that's it some usual support stuff. Faction control. We'll be manipulating which factions spawn for the scenario. Um, I'll get into that when we actually get to the specific scenario situation. Fallout traits is just a, more traits for more character variety. Uh, we're not actually using Fallout stuff in this run. We're just using this just for the traits. Just to have some extra traits. Um, we have Giddy Up. So we'll be able to ride animals. Um, it'll... That'll be an aspect of basically our starting high tech and going low tech playthrough of being marooned on this planet. We, we won't have, we'll have Marines, we'll have equipment, but we won't have vehicles. So we'll have to get caravan animals before we go anywhere. Uh, go explore. This was in the last mod pack. It gives us more opportunities to get out and scavenge in the world. Um, scavenging is going to be much more important to this playthrough than it has been to the past ones. Another aspect I'll get into talking about the actual, uh, Scenario for the, the run, um, keeping bed ownership is the same kind of concept. We send our people out on the map a lot, maybe for multiple days. We don't want to have to reset beds all the time every time they get back. Uh, mass graves, because corpses matter again. Medical tab, minify everything. That way if we do go out and attack bases or go on scavenging runs and we find some high-tech stuff that we can't build because of our unique rule set, we can bring it back with us. Uh, this this mod we're not going to use. That was that was something I forgot to remove from the mod pack. Actually, let's just get rid of this right now. We'll just not have it. Uh, some extra events just for fun. Uh, map generator. So originally I tried to use real ruins, but it was having problems at the moment. And I think real ruins might be too OP as well. So we're using this instead for some more involved ruins on our map spawns rather than just the usual walls. Um, this has the possibility of like getting special furniture and stuff like that, which is what we want. Uh, more involved faction bases, more trait mods, uh, some extra mechs to fight, no self-tame. So we're doing some restrictions on animals uh, 
this removes self tame but doesn't remove the XYZ animals join the colony event, just the self taming event from wild animals on the map. Um, I want to make the point will be that animals that join the colony will, will have to actually go through the effort to recruit them. Um, meat optimization just so the game runs a little bit better. We've got rank badges for our pawns, quality builder, quality surgeon, uh, razor wire just seems to have been ticked off the mod pack. Let me bring that back. I'm not sure what I hit that pulled that off. Maybe double click. Okay, what is what is going on there? Whoa, why is that weird being buggy? Okay, that's really weird. I don't know why that's losing its mind. Um, so we got razor wire, quality builder, quality surgeon, realistic planets. Uh, we're bringing in a bunch of the more vanilla expanded stuff, like the insectoid faction for extra stuff to fight. Uh, we're bringing in regrowth for some more plants. We got the Rimsonal storytellers. We won't be using them probably. Uh, we've got room world farming. So this adds just some more farming stuff with tilled and cultivated soil. Uh, we might not actually make use of this because the hygiene mod has its own um, soil cultivation stuff and this seems pretty op actually i might i think i'm just going to remove this as well from the mod pack right now let's we'll see if i click this is it going to disappear on me no for some reason it's just those mods up there that were being weird not sure what that's about fuses um so seeds we'll have to collect seeds to grow plants we can't just grow everything another survival based issue uh, another survival based mod to make surviving more of an issue than just combat based set up camp camp in the world mod designators simple sidearms uh we don't have run and gun or dual wield from the last mod pack but we still have sidearms because we're still running with tools some storage mods pick up and haul which is not updated to 1.2 but works bridges smarter construction uh, more events more traits trading stuff we got all these vanilla animal additions that were in the last one uh, we've got vanilla apparel expanded so we'll be back to uh, an equipment spread that's more like the first series of ran and less like terminator because we'll have jumpsuits and stuff bionics expansion we can't build bionics which i'll get into but it's something to have more events fishing another so this is like a survival mod that actually benefits us giving us another food source uh, furniture expanded stuff. Uh, vanilla plants expanded. We're not gonna, probably not going to use Perry Persistent either, but I put them in the mod pack just in case. Uh, expanded weapons. So medieval factions. That That is part of the scenario. Uh, Wallite. Wave, Survi wave survival is another option for the mod pack. Uh, originally, this was going to be a wave survival mod pack, but I'm moving away from that. I don't think it fits as well with the concept as it could otherwise. Ammunition. Uh, we need ammunition for our guns. Another aspect of the attrition-based run-through. Uh, we need to get seeds to grow plants. We need to take care of our colonist hygiene. We need to rearm our guns. I made some personal edits to this mod. Uh, one, the mod is a 1.1 mod, but it works with 1.2. I'm not sure if there's any bugs with it, um, but it worked for me, so I'm going to roll with it. I changed around with the mod um, the, what level charge ammo is crafted at and moved that up earlier so that it makes sense with the timing of the mod pack. And the reason I need to do that is the Aliens Pulse Rifles and Alien AVP Weaponry uh, uses charge ammo as the ammo requirement. And I don't know how to change that, so the easiest thing was just to move the crafting or the research requirement for crafting charge ammo to an e earlier tier uh, and it i think i'm pretty okay with that too because the charge ammo seems more difficult to craft so that adds some nice difficulty to that even though we moved it up earlier in the research it's still as difficult to craft as ever we'll be rolling with yayo's combat which changes up some combat mechanics um yeah so Armor changes, accuracy changes, faster bullet speed. Uh, and then this is just job stuff. So that's that's an overview of what the mod pack looks like. Uh, oh shit, we gotta restart. Um, I guess we'll do that. I should not have removed those mods because now we gotta sit here and watch this reboot. But whatever, fuck it. Uh, less mods, it'll run better in theory. Less chance of conflict, so. 
we might as well do it now rather than after the series has started or after I've generated the map. That's kind of the idea for this video is a quick overview of the mod pack, quick overview of the scenario. We'll generate our starting nine colonists for this scenario. And I'll specify, I'll explain why we start with so many colonists and we'll generate our map and that'll be the end of the video. And then I'm gonna get everything laid out in between episodes, like lay out our initial base, get everybody's job priorities, set up i'm going to rename the colonists because uh part of this run through uh will yeah and this is the heirs that throw none of these seem to matter um there are a few red ones but they seem fun so uh yeah like i said part of the scenario or part of this playthrough is going to involve um some stuff outside of rim world which i'll get into as well um I'll probably get into that in the first episode rather than this episode. I'm, I'll mention it in both. I'll mention it in both. So here is our scenario. Uh, AVP Lost Colony. This is a scenario I made up, and I made some, a little bit of lore for it. So uh, our Marines came in on the USS Otago. And we were dispatched to investigate a signal um, in what was assumed to be an uninhabited system. And we believe it might be from a lost colony ship um, that I forget what I named it. What did I named the ship? Um, give me one second. <laughs> ah, the Asteria. Yes. So there's a lost colony ship, the USCSS Asteria, uh, which was assumed lost, and based on this signal, it may actually have made it to a planet. Uh, so the USS Otago was dispatched to investigate this signal and see if they can find this lost colony, hence the name Lost Colony. However, upon our arrival in the system, uh, our synthetic went haywire and sabotaged the Otago, and it was destroyed. Um, one section of Marines managed to escape on a dropship. Those are the nine Marines we'll be starting with. That's two squads of four and the section sergeant that survived. Um, basically, you can think of it as the, the, the nine main non-support Marines from Aliens, right? You've got um, six privates, two corporals, and a sergeant. And then in Aliens, you have Corporal Farrow and Private Spunkmeyer, who are the dropship pilots, so they don't count as part of the section. And then you have Gorman, who is the overarching lieutenant, who is normally would be in charge of two sections of Marines, but there's only one section of Marines present in Aliens. Um, so we'll have two smart gunners, and then the sergeant, and then three other, or six other normal Marines. Uh, so, we are going to be trapped on this planet um, with no immediate way to get off of it. The human colony on this planet, which they are calling Sheol, has regressed to basically a medieval level technology. Um, they, they don't have high technology, and because we are marooned here, having been dropped off of a dropship, uh, we don't either. We don't have, we, like, realistically, if you and two of your friends are dropped from space into a wilderness, you're never going to be able to build a spaceship. I mean, that's how RimWorld works because it's RimWorld, but realistically, it doesn't matter that you come from a future society. You're never going to build a fucking spaceship starting with three people in a hut. So we're going to try and keep our technology level low to what we think we can reasonably build as uh, nine Marines stranded in, on a hostile planet. So we will not be building new guns. We can craft ammunition for the guns we have. You just, you know, like refilling spent rounds basically be our headcanon for that. But uh, no new weaponry. So if something happens and we lose our weapons, uh, that's it. We, we, we have to make do with bows and arrows or what we've managed to scavenge or receive from events. Um, and the lore behind the scavenging is, well, at one point this, this colony was a bit more established. It's just collapsed. So there are ruins around that might have higher technology in them that we can scavenge, but we can't make it ourselves. Um, we'll be starting with kind of a uh, standard Colonial Marines loadout. We've got two sets of standard armament, which is, you can think of that as um, the armaments for a single squad, basically. And then we've got two sets of uh, smart gun loadouts for our two smart gunners. 
And then we've got two sentry guns. And since this is a low tech playthrough where we can't build guns, these are the only turrets we'll ever have unless we can salvage others. So we need to really protect and make good use of these sentry guns. We'll start with 250 ammo, which is fairly low. We definitely want to get our ammo production going very quickly. We'll start with a single additional pump shotgun just for the Corporal Hicks vibes, uh, a single vanimetric power cell, and a couple of steel combat knives as backup weapons. The map will be scattered with ship trunks, which is the debris of our destroyed Conestoga class ship, the USS Otago, and or our dropship that dropped us off and in cannon drifted off and exploded or something, I guess. I don't know. Point is, dropship isn't there now. Um, yeah. So the rules for the playthrough, uh, like I said, we can't craft anything that we logically couldn't craft uh, as real life uh, marooned people stuck in a wilderness, basically. Uh, as, as far as I see it, like, so no high tech research bench, no multi analyzer. Uh, we'll stop production as far as the machining table and we won't do gun crafting any further than we need to to unlock ammo production. And we'll never actually build guns or turrets. So we're going to have to use a lot of traps. Uh, IEDs are viable. We can create shells. I, I think that's reasonable that we could create high explosive or napalm shells or incendiary shells, whatever they're called in base game. Uh, that seems reasonable to me. So we can definitely do that. Um, as far as mortars, mortars is the one thing I haven't really completely decided on. I, I feel like if we say no mortars ever, we might be in for a really difficult playthrough. So I may allow us to fudge a little bit and build mortars, but certainly no like auto mortars or anything like that. I mean, realistically, a mortar is just a steel tube that you chuck a, a shell into, right? And then it fires off of that. So the mortars should be fine, I think. I mean, the, the, uh, a reskin would be nice to make them look more primitive, but I'm not going to go through that effort. Uh, additional rule sets. Um, we can't forcibly recruit people. We're the goddamn colonial marines. We're not going to lock people in a shed and, and force recruit them into our group. The only additional colonists we'll get beyond the starting nine are those that join completely willingly. Either a wanderer joins in or we rescue somebody and they decide to join after they've healed. So that will limit our colonists significantly. I mean, usually in RimWorld, the majority of your colonists come from force recruiting, recruiting them. So we're going to have to protect the nine we start with, protect our equipment, and uh, play very carefully. So I mentioned before as well that there's going to be something outside of RimWorld that ties in with this series. And a little bit about other things I do on the internet is I, I guess you could say I curate uh, digital... Uh, expansions for the Aliens Predator card game. So this is a, a CCG or TCG, depending on how you like to phrase it, a uh, card game like Magic or Pokemon that came out in 1997 uh, and was discontinued in 1999 after one set, one additional set was produced. Um, I've been making sets for the game for many, 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 many years. Um, since like 2004 or five or six or something like that. So well over a decade. Um, so I decided what I would do is my 2020 set for the game would be based off this playthrough. So every episode I'll be making a card for the new card game set to based off what happens in the RimWorld series. And uh, yeah, I'll have links for that in the description if anybody actually plays the obscure, obscure aliens Predator or AVP, if you prefer, card game. Um, so let's look at our colonists now. I think, ah, uh, yes. So we don't want to actually do the medieval storyteller because there's some weird quirks with that and how that generates things. Um, like Civil Outlander Union still spawn, so there's still a lot of guns on the map from them, so we don't want that. I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen that way because it feels like it limits all factions of research to medieval and pre-medieval eras. But when I was test running this for a few hours, I had uh, Civil Outlander Union show up with like combat shotguns and shit. So I don't think that's quite working right. Uh, we don't want things like Empress Evil that are strictly bad events either because we do want some scavenging stuff to go on. Like drop pods can be, you know, uh, debris falling from the, the remains of the Otago in orbit or whatever. It makes sense. Um, I'm not 
I'm, I'm really apprehensive of trying out Parry Persistent because I feel like that might be incredibly overwhelming, especially in a survival-based playthrough. We'll evaluate switching to that maybe if it matters later. Maybe we'll switch to Hildegard if we want more raids or something. I've never used these two, so I'm not sure about that. So I'm feeling like we might go Cassandra. I mean, Randy Random is the memes, but... Uh, I think we'll just, we'll do Cassandra. Um, I think that makes the most sense with the theme of the, the story, the playthrough, the concept, basically. Um, let's do... Now, I'm thinking heavy globe coverage. I was going to do 100%. Um, okay, let's see. If we do 100% and then we do... Dry, desert, default, earth-like. Hmm. Okay, let's go 50%. So the other thing I want to do is I wanted to make the, the scenario generation pretty random. Like a random planet, a random starting location, and semi-randomized marines. In the case of the marines, I'm going to take the opportunity to veto a lot of shit for the concept. But yeah, I think I'm going to do 50% glowed coverage, um, and then... It might be too much, too, because my big concern is, okay, so the victory condition for this run, we probably have to uh, travel to the ship to escape. I think that's really the only victory condition out of the three base games and one modded victory condition I found that will work for us. So we're going to have to get off the planet. So, how? okay, we'll do 50%, and uh, if we have multiple continents, we'll reroll the planet because we don't want to... Um, have something that requires drop pods, which we can't build normally. In terms of the factions, uh, let's not randomize this. So one thing I saw was that the predators aren't always hostile, which I don't like. I'm not too sure how to force that. I couldn't find any options in the mods, but um, So we're going to want to do no Outlander Unions because they will have guns, and that's against the theme. We'll keep the tribes, no pirate bands, again, guns, no friendly colonial marines. We want Xenomorphs, we want Yaucha, both types. Black Hive is good, Insects are good, Unknown Kingdom, Unknown Kingdom Hostile, that's fine. Kingdom Civil, Kingdom Rough, Kingdom Savage. Um... We should spawn all of these, I guess. Total number six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's a lot of stuff. Let's see how it looks. We'll do we'll do thirteen. I'm not sure if all of these properly have bases. I assume they do. I assume if we want to make sure like that we have Xenos in the game, I assume we need to actually make sure they spawn as a faction out of the six. So going 13 should be safe. And then we'll do a random planet. And I believe, I, hopefully our settings hold. If they don't, we'll just randomize the seed and do like 50%. Actually, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I don't know if this takes the planet type into consideration either because that's a modded thing, so maybe the random planet doesn't matter that much. All right, two continents is bad. Uh, let's take a quick look at the faction tab, though, just to make sure this seems like it's working. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It doesn't seem right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Savage, gentle, gentle, gentle. Oh, yeah, so it's filling in extras. Yeah, so a lot of those don't actually spawn properly. Civil, rough, three kingdoms, three tribes, and two predators, and then some extra stuff filled in, and then the insect hive. All right, I think we'll leave it on 13, just because I like the idea of having a bunch of extra factions running around. Uh, these predators are hostile, so it might actually have been a quirk of the... Uh, randomizing goodwill thing that that uh, caused them to not be hostile before but it looks like that probably worked so we'll just do another random 50% coverage planet till we get one that works 
not exactly compelling content, but that's why this is in the intro video instead of episode one proper. Because uh, this only really needs to be watched by people that are really interested in some of the finer points of the concept and and whatnot. Um, I'll do a quick overview again of the scenario during the start of episode one, but you know people don't need to see all the yeah that's not that's not gonna work i like this map this is really interesting but that's not gonna that's not gonna work um <laughs> oh for two yeah maybe i should have uh maybe we just shouldn't do truly random eh, it's fun all right there we go this one looks fine um so we've got tundra, then ex oh extreme desert, yeah. So we're not we're not gonna do a playthrough that requires um, wasteland. Oof, we're not we're not gonna do a starting location that is gonna make survival too difficult. Tundra's probably okay. Extreme desert's definitely out. Wasteland sounds like it's definitely out to me. I like this planet. We've got this really cool thing where there's like habitable bands and then the equator is like extreme desert. This is a cool planet. And it's all one landmass, which is great. It looks like it's all one landmass. Yeah, we can reach the ice cap. Somehow there's tribes living down there. Let's look over the factions real quick. So we've got five kingdoms. We've got the tribes. We've got extra predator clan this time. They're all hostile. Uh, Cool, we've only got two neutral factions, so we'll really have to work to win people over, which I like. Makes sense, we're just some strange space people crashing on their planet. Uh, let's do a, okay, let's make this larger first. I'm gonna go with the larger medium map, just cause I like that. Uh, select a random site. What do we get? Arid shrubland, that'll be it. Uh, right next to this different area. Let's look at this. Growing period, 20 out of 60 days. Oh, wait. The growing period, 11th of September to 1st of April, May? Ah, Southern Hemisphere. I guess that makes sense, right? I've never lived in the Southern Hemisphere before. No, it's very equatorial. No, I guess it is Southern Hemisphere overall. Uh, where? I lost the point. There it is. We're right next to a road, which is nice. Down the road from the kingdom. We got predators right nearby, insect hive right nearby. I like the spot in terms of variety. Some good different terrain options nearby to go check out. Slate, sandstone, and marble. No granite kind of sucks, but it's fine. We got agave fruit. Time zone. Is that base game? All right. Uh, let's continue. So we'll get our nine Marines and then we'll have one other one that could show up. Uh, I think we'll leave this guy alone. Actually. I think if we have our spare Marine show up, then being a blooded Marine would be good backstory for him actually. But however, none of our main ones we're going to let be blooded. So we have a bunch of additional health conditions. So any randomized character we get with a health condition, we're going to replace. Um, any traits that are particularly problematic for a barracks-based playthrough, we're going to mulligan as well because we are going to run this like a military unit a bit, so they are going to share a barracks rather than individual bedrooms. So this person gets mulligan. Oh, we're also going to mulligan anybody who is really old. Uh, 47 I'd probably allow, but that's 40, 40, upper 40s is about our limit. We don't want any grannies in the Marines, right? Uh, so this one gets randomized away. No synths either, because our synth is why we're here in the first place. Uh, no survivors, because they're incapable of combat. I think that's the Ripley-Newt kind of role. Except, you know, Ripley doesn't make sense, because she shoots a lot of shit. Uh, so here we got our first proper colonial marine, but he has a carcinoma. Corporate li liaison, no Burks. Nope. We're going to be we're gonna have two smart gunners, and then the rest are going to be straight colonial marines. Uh, frail, you're an old man. It might take a little bit to get proper random ones. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do the child Marines either, the Sojas. Like, as a backstory, it's fine, but we're not going to take anybody who is, like, a 17-year-old convict either. Um, 
So we got, this one's really good. Fast Walker, Steadfast, and Tough. Fantastic. Double Passion and Construction, A+. Plus. So there's our first Smart Gunner. Um, oh, we should check this other Smart Gunner and see if they're acceptable. Stab Scar is fine. Yeah. Wow. Wait, are they the same traits? Wow. That's weird. Um, yeah, so he's acceptable, so we're going to have to use him. Uh... We already have our two M56 operators, so we roll past all of those. No blooded characters in the main group. Uh, a toothache. That's pretty minor. Uh, I think we're still going to mulligan all health conditions because it's going to be a real pain in the ass at the start. 56, too old. 40 M56 operator. Colonial Marine with Hepatitis K. Special K. Underground or Steadfast Tough. So I'm seeing a lot of repeat traits, which is... I mean, these are really good traits for us, obviously. Underground or less so, but um, I want them to be pretty different. So hopefully we don't keep getting everybody steadfast tough. I want to see some of the new traits from the mods too as well. In my test runs, I saw a fair amount of other traits, but it seemed like certain traits are more common. Maybe it's something with them being Marines. They have a higher chance of being like steadfast and tough. That might be what it is. Don't know how that works. Uh, so this one's good. So they're in. So far we have one female, we've got our Vasquez and our Drake. We've got another male. Uh, colony Marine, Colony Survivor, Undergrounder, no nudists. Wimp we would keep, Gorman, Steadfast, Tough, but they're a Soja. Liaison, Liaison, Colonial Marine, Undergrounder, Steadfast, Abrasive, Acceptable. Uh, yep, so you're in. That's two males, two females, no blooded. Colonial Marine, Undergrounder, Steadfast, Tough. I don't like all the repeat traits. Hmm. What I'm going to think about is maybe adding traits to all these guys. I might do that. Like, everybody gets a randomized extra trait just to differentiate them more because I'm not I'm pretty disappointed in the randomized spread being really redundant right now um, see there's one rad resistance is a different uh, it's a it's a fallout trait yeah so you're good so we need another random marine colonial marine he's got a migraine I mean like I found marines with different traits but they seem to be rarer for them I think we just skipped past something on accident there yeah, my mouse might be going bad. Huh. Getting some double clicks going on. I'll have to find another one. Uh, there we go. Colonial Marine, Underground or Trigger Happy Wise. Okay, that's cool. He's he's unique. He's a, potentially a good candidate for our sergeant. I wanted the sergeant to be somebody who had a trait that made them feel like a sergeant, so Wise is a good option for that one. Uh, trigger Happy, not so great. I mean, it's trigger happy is fine in base game, but here we're looking at uh, a very we're, we have ammunition as a crafting requirement, right? So we don't want to spray and pray. Colonial Marine, Underground or Quick Sleeper. Wow, look at those passions. You're great. Missing a pinky, but don't matter. It's not a disease, so he's in the team. Uh, eyesight is going to be a no. This one's being really uh, harsh on the rolls. Undergrounder, Steadfast, Tough again. Jeez. Uh, how many Undergrounders do we have? These are going to be really annoying to deal with. F four Undergrounders? Why are they so com Five Undergrounders. Why are they so commonly Undergrounder? No, six? Six Undergrounders? Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Um, so you're in. Do we have anybody who's good at plants? No. That's the other thing. Uh, their limited backstories tend to make them not good at plants. Anybody who has a passion in it is going to go on plant duty. Uh, probably anybody who starts with a decent score as well. But that's that's part of why I need to uh, 
tinker with the work schedule so much between episodes is because we're going to have some pretty harsh requirements and we're going to be working with some bad skills in a few categories like plants and mining and construction, although we do have passions, so at least that'll help. But it looks like we're good on cooking, med medical, and intellectual at least. So let's see what our last guy gets us. See, rancher, rooted, this guy's got cool traits. It's, it's probably because the colonial marines are forcing some stuff to be very common, I would guess. So we're going to see about giving everybody one extra random trait. Uh, underground or steadfast tough again? Seriously? Okay. We're, no more underground or steadfast toughs. Nobody, no more steadfast tough, period. But let's keep rerolling this guy until we get one that isn't that. No nudist. Fast walker, steadfast tough, benign growth. There, very charismatic undergrounder, fast hands. Cool. Well, that's very different. I like it. Um, yep, so they're good. Ah, very charismatic. We might make her the sergeant then. No, I think we'll make the wise one the sergeant. That sounds more appropriate. Also, he's 46. Oh, you're 71. That's insane. Uh, do we dare have a 71-year-old Marine? I think we gotta, we gotta re-roll him. It doesn't make sense that we'd have a 71-year-old Marine. Even though this guy's really interesting and unique, he has to go. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Underground or Steadfast Tough, Veto. Ah, that's another one that's being a real stinker. Uh, benign Growth, no, and Underground or Steadfast Tough. Underground or Volatile, oof. That's awful. Uh, we got to keep it because they're not a, uh, like we said, they're not they're not a underground or steadfast top. They have no health conditions, so they're in the team uh, as awful as they are. Well, that should add some drama to the series, having an undergrounder going outside doing plant jobs and then losing their shit constantly because they're volatile. Eesh, great. Um, not looking forward to that one. And then you were good, right? Yeah, you're you're fine. All right, so if we go to prepare carefully, um, can I add, if we add a trait, hmm, is there no add one at random option? That really sucks. Why is this blocked? Action, fast, oh, okay. Um, so if we roll randomly, It'll be a problem. Okay, here's what we'll do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, oh, shit. What will we do? We can use one of the colonists' roll traits randomly and then redistribute them manually. So if we go to Missy, right? Missy. Let's make sure I don't forget this. She is by default undergrounder and abrasive. So if we then randomize our traits like this. Okay, yeah, and any any uh, duplicate traits are ignored, right? So what we'll do is this will be the first Marine, second Marine, third Marine, we'll reroll like that, etc. and so forth. So Sleepy is the first one. This, this is also why we're going to change our names, because they don't make sense of Tough, Steadfast, and Fortune Finder. Already Tough, already Steadfast, you get Fortune Finder. And what did this do? Forged food amount, mining yield, animal yield, plant harvest yield, and trade price improvement. Wow! Really good. Um, but he doesn't do anything. I think we'll put him on plants and train him up in plants, even though he's only at a one, probably. All right, let's go back to Missy. Let's reroll again for everybody else. Nervous and very neurotic. All right, so Feral, you gain nervous 
And I think this is fair because we're re-rolling randomly, so we're getting bad traits as well as good ones. And on, oh, we can't do nervous because it conflicts. Uh, what we're going to do is nervous overwrites it. So steadfast now becomes nervous. I think that makes sense as well. For more variety in our Marines. Alright, so nervous. I forgot what the other one was now. Very neurotic. So you are nervous. You get very neurotic. Yeah, normally three is the max. You can add more blah, blah, blah. That's fine. May not display properly. Uh, I think that's not an issue for four traits. I'm pretty sure you can actually get four traits in base game. Maybe it's a modded thing. Maybe I'm insane. All right, so another batch, Undergrounder, Night Owl, and Pessimist. Uh, Night Owl, we're vetoing because that will fuck up the barracks stuff. So, um, who do we just do? Haze. So you're already an Undergrounder, so that's ignored. Missy gains Pessimist. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. She's going to be the worst fucking character. Pessimist, abrasive, and undergrounder? Oh, that's awful. Well, we, we decided how we're rolling it. Tough, steadfast, and undergrounder. White mulligan. That doesn't count. That's the same shit we had before. Um, wise, and then frail back. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fair. Another wise pawn. What does wise do? Int, research, psychic sensitivity, mental break threshold times 75%. That's good. I don't know how that's, I don't know where that's measured from. Um, we'll figure that out in a second. And then frail back for the sergeant, I guess. How annoying. They'll have reduced carry capacity. Hopefully that's not a detrimental, a horribly detrimental thing to have, but we'll add it. So they have global work speed increase, but reduced carrying capacity. Interesting. All right, and then we got to adjust Missy back. Um, so she had undergrounder, abrasive, and pessimist. Abrasive. Everybody's going to hate her. Pessimist. And Undergrounder. I mean, I hate her already. She hasn't even spawned yet. All right. Uh, those are our nine Marines, then. Oh, um, what was I going to check? The mental break threshold thing. That was on... Feral? Nervous? Plus eight percent. Okay, so so wise is good for mental breaks then. Oh, you're also awful. I didn't even realize you were equally as bad with your nervous and abrasive. Different kind of bad. All right, so we've got a few weak links in the in the squad. We know we know if somebody has to go out and die, <laughs> which marines to send out. Um. All right. Let's let's rock. In the words of Vasquez. This has been longer than I thought it would be, but randomizing the starting stuff took a little while. Um, all right, uh, blah, 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 blah. A bunch of giddy up notifications. I guess because it's the first time I've actually loaded the mod. Our ship has been sabotaged. Oh, a bunch of extra stuff spawned on the map instead of out of the ship, which I didn't expect. Uh, that's really weird. I don't know what, what controls that. I'm pretty sure everything spilled out of the ship in the past. So I'm not sure, out of the dropship. I'm not sure why that changed this time. Um, hmm. Well, this is the map. We'll look it over real quick before I end the video. We've got these different kinds of ruins. We've got some beds, granite, utter garbage. We had a hidden room there. 
Some cloth we can salvage, which will be nice. Slate beds, also complete trash. Some plant pots we can salvage. Uh, that looks like not a bad place to move into, though. Maybe. Mm. Terrain fertility is probably something we want to look at, too, in the long run. We got a bunch of cows. Yeah, so this is a nice base to move into, but there's no terrain fertility nearby. Huh. Well, I'll figure out in between episodes where we want to move. Maybe this spot's a little bit better, although this ruin's harder to clear out. I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also don't like how close to the edge of map this is, but this is also pretty close to the edge of the map. Really, the edges is where everything good is. The center of this is a uh, freaking wasteland. Also, we have no surface water, which is going to be interesting for hygiene. We'll have to get a well down pretty quick, I guess. Uh, ancient danger there. Uh, I don't think we can use geothermal, so we don't really care about the steam geysers so much. Gas we can use. That actually might be really useful. Oh, I should mention, we're going to allow coolers. Uh, otherwise, the game gets more tedious than I prefer. Um, with the gas geyser being right there, we may restrict ourselves specifically to gas-based coolers. I think that would be neat. But then we'd have to use other options um, past that once we run out of capacity for that. We do have trees, we have agave, so we should be okay on food and stuff. So that's good. Uh, I'll get everything set up, uh, then we'll start the first episode. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna upload this. It might be today, it might be tomorrow, today being the 9th. Um, but the first episode proper should be on the 10th. So if I upload this on the 9th, you'll know when the first episode is coming. Thanks for stopping by.